It's because we are a conduit and a packager, a conduit and a packager of this important cutting edge material that people need to do the work that they're engaged in. Yes. And that's a, that's a, that's a different place than publishing books for profit. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm on Gabriola Island, which is between Vancouver Island and Vancouver, Western Canada. I'm with the folks that are with New Society Publishers, and I want to say that when you look at titles like this, Finding Community, Eco-Entrepreneuring, The Long Descent, Senior Co-Housing, these folks I've been looking forward to taping a long time because their books for a long, long time have been bringing us new stories, new ideas, and pictures of our predicament, perspectives that matter. So I want to start by introducing the publisher and founder, Judith Plant. Judith, thank you for bringing this to all of us in the world, first of all. Well, I, I didn't do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it in response to um, a, a point of view, um, as you were describing where we are located. Place is really important to us because place, what we stand on is what we stand for. So we are, uh, the, the, the publishing house, our take on the society publishers, it, it itself has a long history, it comes from what is known as the bioregional movement, uh, bio and regional life place, learning to live within the gifts and limitations of a particular place, um, recreating culture that fits. Uh, so that we as human beings can find our place in nature. So that's the philosophy um, that we took to the publishing work years ago when we actually started a magazine that was based on uh, uh, local actions set in the context of the global growing understanding that we need to get our feet rooted firmly in a place so that we can know who we are, so that people who are trying to relate to us know who we are as well. Mm -hmm. um, a First Nations woman years and years ago said to me, you have to, we can't work with you white people because you will not stand still. We don't know where you're coming <laughs> from. So until you can find a place and, and, and start belonging to that place, which takes generations and generations of time, um, where we are, you're like, you're slippery. And so that's, that's, the, that's been the quest. That is the underlying philosophy, as I said. Um, that really, I think you could find the thread in any of these books of that perspective. So that's, that's what my partner and I and a group of other people within the bioregional movement in the late 80s, uh, bioregional movement from California with such, such uh, learned and, and inspiring people as Gary Snyder and Freeman House and, and Peter Berg. And I remember distinctly at a cocktail party one evening saying to Gary Snyder, the, the great god that he is, Gary, where are the women? Oh, the women, the women. Yeah, the women are busy. They're, um, they're off trying to figure out who they are. I thought, wow, if this movement's to be anything different than any other of the political movements that have gone before, we need women's voices. So we're just going to recreate the same mess, the same with the same, uh, the same frames, if you like, the same, the same uh, uh, values and beliefs just cast in a different light, as the left politics did. Uh, if we don't bring women's voices into this, we're not going to get anywhere new. It was your book, Judith. That's right. You wrote. And that That's was right. your book, reading that, that I went, oh, I am so heartened as a woman to have a woman speaking for me here, speaking about the power and the promise of ecofeminism, of an ecological and feminist consciousness. It was like, it was like suddenly, I didn't realize it didn't have a voice until you had a voice for me. With you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, because without that, because I needed that myself. My goodness, all around me with this bioregional movement where we're trying to bring men home, uh, they're all going off and joining the Green Party. And they're not home. We're, and still, I'm looking after the kids, we're homeschooling the kids, we're doing all the food, we're doing all the gardening, we're doing all the work, and the guys are off getting their pictures taken and stuff, you know? <laughs> 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 wait, wait a 
<laughs> What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I and I feel though yeah. that some of that is still happening with we do have the men with the prominent voices and they are heard more fully in this culture. We are sh you know, you are helping to shift that and I see more and more of the women who are doing the pioneering work being known. Yes, and we published some of those. And I'm so people. thrilled you published. So then we found we found, I found women like Starhawk and 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 uh, others, and it was like oh, just this I am. We are not alone. Then this this whole movement is happening. Okay, we don't hear about it on the news at night, and we never ever will because that's not where our power is. But uh, yeah, and more, and more men are helping with the canning. I mean, I don't mean to be trite about it, but things are shifting. So. We, at that period of time, the late 80s, we were publishing a magazine and we met up with the folks from Philadelphia over the contract negotiations for Healing the Wounds, actually, with the Society book. Publishers. And they, in turn, had grown out of the movement for nonviolent civil disobedience and social change in the U.S. So they had a really important place in Philadelphia. They'd given voice to, uh, to uh, you know, how to do civil disobedient actions first people in the U.S. to do trainings, very important in our political history. Uh, so they suggested, well, you know, you might reach more people if you publish books instead of a magazine. So we moved to Gabriel with that idea in mind because we needed to be on the grid, we needed to be able to actually make a telephone call, um, and so on. So, uh, and we teamed up with them and we formed a Canadian office of New Society Publishers and for the next five years they taught us the business because there's, there's a lot to learn and, and, and <laughs> that never ends with pub book publishing, particularly today. So over the years we, uh, we sort of shifted the, uh, the focus of the publishing house from peace and nonviolent civil disobedience and, and, and uh, relationships of nonviolence uh, to sustainability and the environment, because that's what was going on in the world, really. Uh, uh, and that's what, where we, we saw where people need tools. So we didn't get into publishing because we so much like books, or, or we wanted to uh, make money as publishers, or have a business. We got into it because it was the next phase of our social and political change work. And, uh, uh, and that's what we've done. And then in 1996, the Philadelphians, after many years of service, decided to fold their company, their non-profit, and ours was a non-profit at the same time. And uh, we basically, through some fancy finagling and some good outside support, financial support, we were able to settle up with them so they were able to close shop and pay their bills and feel okay about shutting down and launch the new New Society Publishers. Uh, LTD, limited company, as a limited company here on Gabriola, and that started in 96 after I say five years of training with the Philadelphians. And now this is what we have today. It's, it's, um, it's, it, you know, a few years ago, I think uh, in some ways almost mainstream caught up or with us or something. We <laughs> so, sort of came together and so now our task is to, is to continue to seek the cutting edge. What are the tools that people need uh, and that community groups and, and so on and it's, and it's different. Of course it's different as things evolve. And so all of these lovely and uh, excited and wonderful and interesting and intellectual people here work with us to do that work. And that's, in a nutshell, where we are today. Woo! Woo! <laughs> wow! What a journey! <laughs> and with titles like what? Radical Simplicity, and Independence Days, and Senior Co-Housing. I mean, I think you are doing the cutting edge. So I want to toss the ball out to all of you who work with Judith. I mean, you're a team. You're a team. Can I jump in right away? Jump. Just because when you were talking about the, the um, feminist, eco-feminist perspective, um, a call came out recently from a, a Cunny Feminist Press in the States, and they were looking for the top 40 feminists under 40. Oh, right. And so I wrote back to them, and I, the author that I suggested was Sharon Astick. And Sharon is very much a sustainable living, and she had gone through a bad experience with an interviewer who came to her house, looked at what she was doing, living sustainably, and called her a uh, eco-anorexic, is that uh, the term? Carbon, carbon anorexic. Yeah. Carbon anorexic. And she was quite hurt by that. Mm -hmm. They gave the impression her children were huddled together for warmth mm -hmm. because she turned the heat down in her house. So she had that experience. And then I saw this and I thought, well, 
I don't know if these feminists will think she's the new feminist mm -hmm. because she stays home. She does canning. She homeschools. All the things that you said mm -hmm. Sharon does, right? And she writes and she encourages other people to do the same. And Importantly assisted in all of those by her husband. Yes. Mm -hmm. also yes. A a major support yeah. by him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the, the, to make a long story short, she was accepted. She did get the honor of being one of the top 40 feminists under 40. So I thought <laughs> so fabulous. Yeah. You know, yeah. Deal. Yeah. yeah, your work goes beyond your authors. I mean, your work yeah. goes, your, your work is in that kind of networking mm -hmm. um, to, to, to bring. And, and you know, Sharon's work is powerful and fabulous, mm -hmm. really important. Yes, if you decide to pick up her books, be prepared, because you're going to have your life changed. There's no time. Well, I certainly did. No, and not <laughs> lives. That's well, where it does. Books and that change change your life. If yeah. I can speak to Jenny, that, um, Judith was talking about our books being cutting edge, and I think I've been here for four and a half years, and I watch our books, the prescience of them. They go from being books that and ideas that are just sort of simmering under the surface. Some people are aware, but most aren't. And then all of a sudden, it's what everyone's talking about. And so many of our mm -hmm. books are like that. And I've watched that in four and a half years. Mm -hmm. I've watched, like, for example, Guerrilla Gardening by David Tracy. Um, he was talking about this whole concept of, of claiming land that's not yours, but what the heck, probably everyone's going to be happy about it anyway, because you're beautifying a city in an urban space. Well, I've got good friends in Vancouver that are doing that very thing. They live along a railway line. Their guerrilla gardening is actually extending their whole entire apartment building. They've, they've brought in truckloads of soil. They've built raised beds. They've got patios sitting. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. So this is like guerrilla gardening gone crazy, but there's a concept that is huge. And you were on top of it way ahead. Three yes. years ago, I forget when we're looking yes. at now. Another yes. example are all of Sharon Astic. We're huge Sharon Astic fans. We're, we're <laughs> Sharon Astic groupies. Um, but, you know, everything that she speaks about, she speaks about food security. She speaks about taking care of yourself, taking care of your neighbors, being prepared for emergencies, self-sufficiency. These are all in her books. They're all accessible. She's as funny as heck. I mean, she's a, she's a wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. But uh, the way she lives her life is the way we all can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's mm -hmm. another thing. Our books are very accessible. Not all of our books are, are entirely <laughs> accessible, but so many of them are. They offer solutions. And another thing that I want to speak to is, is there's an overriding anxiety in the world that mm. people feel. Mm. I mean, my husband teaches college, and he was saying how so many of his students are, are seeking professional help through school. They're, they're overburdened, and it's not, it's more than just the school and being 20 or whatever. It's really got to do with what kind of a life are they working towards and moving yeah. into, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and our books, I think, are so helpful for that. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not simplistic, but they're not difficult either. And they're, they're what we live by, and they're what a future generations grab onto and, and, and move with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, par I, I see that you, you have you know, the depth of thinking like Richard Heinberg doing Peak Everything, which in its own way is, mm -hmm. is prescient as the numbers start to come in to, to, to follow up on what he's saying. But I especially like that you were showing real life people on the ground doing those things to mm -hmm. create that kind of connectedness that Judith was talking mm -hmm. about, living here in place. Yeah. Sharon Astic is a prime example of doing prime that, of course. Example. Yeah. What other kinds of um, books or topics do other anybody else want to speak about or who you're meeting through through New Society? Anybody else? Well, I could just sort of step in and say I've worked here for about four years and, and I was slowly waking up to the realities of the world before I started to work here. But when I started to work here, it's like being jerked into reality. And, and uh, that's been a, a blessing for me is learning myself out of from everybody here and from our books about and, and having a garden and having my own chickens and, and trying to be sustainable and, and trying to think about everything that I do in my mm -hmm. life about do I really want this? You know, do I really need this, this thing that I could buy today? Actually, no, I don't. You know, and, and what's going to happen to this when I'm done with it? Mm. You know, a, a mm. friend comes to me and says, we've got these fabulous new cutting boards. They're plastic and, and they're really great and they're really convenient. And then when you're done with them, you just throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, what's wrong with this picture? You know, and, and and so you go out and you get you you use something that'll last you your lifetime and many more lifetimes. And when it does get thrown out, it, it biodegrades. And it, they're little things, but but I think an awful lot of people just take that and they say it's convenient, it's great, it's wonderful. Look at this, how much easier this makes my life. 
But no, it doesn't. Not, well, at least not for the planet. It doesn't anyway. So that's, that's a personal view at it since I've been working here. It's just an awareness of even just the littlest things in your life, you know, that, that, that you can change. And I hope, hope that that is getting through to other people in the countries, in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know, Jania, one thing that we do that is perhaps a little different from other book publishing companies is we actually go out and talk to our readers through going to really interesting events like the uh, Midwest Renewable Energy Association, their annual uh, fair, basically, that now Sue and Ingrid have been going to for four or five years now, and they wouldn't miss it for the world. So it might be um, interesting mm. to, for your listeners to hear a bit about Certainly. What do you hear from the readers when you go up there? Well, it's in many ways it's a really it's a great barometer. It's sort of right smack in the middle of the U.S. in central Wisconsin, and it's uh, attended largely by people who are actively involved with renewable energy or are beginning to be, and, and so sustainable. and sustainable living, especially in the last couple of years, I've really noticed that um, it is real. It's a it's a real boots on the ground look at what's happening not in Seattle or in Vancouver or in New York or in upstate New York, but really sort of in the Midwest. And uh, it's, quite, it's quite rural. It's just a, it's wonderfully re-engaging, I think. When you come away from it, you think, oh, it's getting through. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and it's three, three days and 18, 20,000 people. Yeah. Ooh. Camp. Yeah. yeah. And it's, a, it's, a, it's at this glorious complex where they, the Midwest Renewable Energy Association lives, which is all powered by wind and solar and all these different installations show up each year. They do permaculture courses. It's, it's an amazing thing, right, right in the middle of corn country and nothing for miles around. Mm -hmm. It's quite mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that many people, too, and it's the, I think it's probably the greenest show there is. Yeah. There's no garbage, no waste. They, mm. All of the food is served on compostable plates and cutlery, and mm. uh, it's it's incredible. Mm. Yeah, it is. It mm. is. <laughs> and so, what do you hear? You know, Judith mentioned you meet some of your readers there. Are you hearing from them what they want to be knowing more about? Are you just seeing lives change? What What are you What What are you picking up in the air antenna? Often you do. Often we come back with. Uh, an idea of what <clears throat> many people are looking for, uh, the same thing. And it's odd that it seems to go in waves. One year we'll come back and say, wow, everybody was looking for stuff on this. And nobody last year asked about that. And so we'll you know, give it some thought, and often we will follow that up and go and look for mm -hmm. someone in the field mm -hmm. who might be equipped to write a book about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We used to go to San Francisco a lot, my, my partner Chris and I, and uh, the book table is a very interesting place to touch the pulse of the people. Yeah, really what is the book table? Uh, we we book set table. up a massive, Your book table. massive yeah. display of books yes. and yeah. then stand behind it, and it's just like a constant coffee party because people come, and particularly around you know major political events like George Bush got in again. Yeah. My God, people came up to our table knowing that we're not Americans it was such grief. I, I mean, using the opportunity to relate to us as a way of saying, please forgive us. It's yeah. not me. Uh -huh. It's not me. Uh -huh. And then we feel so terrible. And, you know, and, and well, that's just an, a, a, a sort of an extreme example. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but that's the sort of thing that something about books, eh? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. something about books that brings out people's real stuff. Yeah. Well, in your case in particular, the flavor of the, 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 the themes that you are covering tell people already where you are. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to feel safe to come to you and say, I'm so sorry we got Bush in again. <laughs> I mean, because it's against, yeah. it's moving, it's not an energy that moves us towards yeah. that living in place, that yeah. living more sustainably. Yeah. I just heard Richard Heinberg speak. What's the book that's going to tell me what I can do? Give me the book that tells me what I can do. Yes. Well, here's the Better World Handbook. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're set. Oh, they're happy. Right? They can yeah. take it away. It's I think the, that's the mm -hmm. thing that I'm hearing from our viewers is like, they, they know, they may not want to quite believe that things are, things are worse, but they can feel it, even mm -hmm. if they, mm -hmm. and, and they want to, what can we do? 
which is, of course, why the whole guerrilla gardening thing mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. exploding like crazy. Mm -hmm. But people are looking levels deeper than that, uh, as, your, as your folks are pointing out. That's, the, uh, that's the thing I notice that when you're at <coughs> conferences, when people sort of <coughs> sidle up to the table and do you know anything about any of these books? You do? Or first they think you're just manning the booth and oh, it's yes. a nice collection of books. But then when they find out that you work there, it's, you know, they're stuck. They're in and they're <laughs> just... It's a level of comfort, too, yeah, don't yeah. you think? I mean, it's Well, I think your, your yeah. comments about people feel that they know us somewhat mm -hmm. from the material. Yes, right? that's really yes. true. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's so, so rewarding to see how many people come and have known the company for years and years, and they come up and say, I have shelves full of your books. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I've been reading yeah. your authors mm -hmm. for decades. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always really yeah. exciting when mm -hmm. that happens as yeah. well. So what you're hearing, of course, here is that you are thought leaders. The authors that you are bringing forward, the authors you look for, because mm -hmm. you now know, a t I mean, that's something that, different. You're not just already, you know, staying with the bank of authors that you've already had. You are actively looking for people that can knowledgeably cover topics. I mean, that strikes me as unusual. Maybe I don't know the world of publishing. But it's sort of, I mean, you now have a, um, <laughs> we now are relying on you, you that prescience mm -hmm. that you have. Um, yeah. So those folks with the shelves of books, you know, are counting on you, are looking towards what else mm -hmm. is on the forward edge, mm -hmm. what Joanna you're Macy doing. Said exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Joanna Macy. She mm -hmm. Joanna said exactly the same thing to me a few years ago. We, we you've got to keep going. You, we've got to. You, we need new society publishers, and it's because we are a conduit and a packager, a conduit and a packager of this important cutting edge material that people need to do the work that they're engaged in. Yes. And that's a, that's a, that's a different place than publishing books for profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Or what's going to sell. And, and part of that that we're moving into is of course the digital age. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, the youngest generations, the people who are 20 mm -hmm. in, in Steve's courses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's where they find their information. So you may have noticed there's no one here looking that fresh 20 year old. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been a little bit of a challenge, but you know, it's something that we're all doing together and uh, trying to bring it to, to a younger reader who may be reading on an iPad, may be reading electronically. So uh, as far as possible, we're making our books available electronically mm -hmm. and uh, moving mm -hmm. towards the, the simultaneous uh, e-publishing e of books. Of course, Heather could talk to it better than I can. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. part of bringing the information forward is the, is the actual structure of the information. Yes. The is form, the format. Yes. But it's still yeah. the book, you know, whether it's, the book's being read on yeah. an iPad, whether it's being read on a Kindle, whether it's, you know, whether you've got your traditional book. You know, the, mm -hmm. the book is, I believe the book is the idea. The book is, is the, the concepts. It's, you know, it can be packaged anyway, but we're, we're about the ideas. Yes, you're um, about the ideas. Yeah, that's, the that's ideas. the heart of it. How do you bring those ideas forward? And, and, and you know, the, the, the gift of the book is you give us depth. The gift of the book gives us time, the author time, to really pursue ideas, you know, fully. That, that's so nice. Fully. It's not a web page. You know, that's right. It's not a tweet. It's not a tweet. That's right. That's right. That's right. Which, which we understand because peak moment it tends. You know, we're in between. You know, half hour is not a documentary. It will not take us five years to produce this. We hope. And nor is it. Nor is it the YouTube three minute sound bite. Exactly. Though some of what people say fits that. We're trying to give people a little more to chew on. We are as you are. Like you a TED know. lecture. Like a yeah, TED yes, lecture. Yeah, yeah. 15 minutes. In a way, except that we have a group here, instead of one person giving their one idea, you have a more social, social yes. thing. Yes, in this group, this is really, really lovely. We have only about four minutes left here. Okay. As, uh, anybody have any thoughts they wanted to make sure to cover? We haven't yet. Mm. I guess I could just say that when you watch the news, especially coming out from South, uh, there seems to be a lot of fear in the world, uh, a lot of fear, a lot of fear, because stuff is happening that, although people have been warned about for some time, uh, typically didn't really believe it could possibly be happening, but it actually is now. And I think that, that our, at least our books, as we've said before, do give solutions, simple solutions. They're not going to solve everything, but on a personal level, Mm -hmm. on a personal level, mm -hmm. things that you can mm -hmm. do as an individual to help 
get past that fear. Mm -hmm. You know, because I you cannot survive if you're surviving in fear because it brings out all this other unpleasant stuff that, that isn't real. It's just based in fear and, and you need ideas and solutions and things you can do on a day-by-day -day basis mm -hmm. to help you get through scary, scary times. I think and, what and they are is they're galvanizing. Yeah. Yes. And when you they're, are they're galvanizing, they're galvanizing. Mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you are, it's always fight or flight with a reaction to fear and there is nothing worse than being paralyzed with the idea that you can't do anything. You've lost your personal control. You forget control of the world, you've lost your personal control. And when you feel you can get your personal control back, well then that's exponential. That gathers together. People be, can group together and, and strong individuals become strong groups rather than paralyzed people become prey. Yes. And, yes. and I think what, mm -hmm. what uh, Jean was saying is our books produce that galvanizing effect. You read them and you're motivated. You read them and you're uplifted and you read them and you're provided with tools. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Last minute, I'm going to turn back to you, Judith. <laughs> Where are we going? Any last words? Mm. Well, um, open heart, inquiring mind. I'd say that's what we're, we're attempting to do is to keep our, our hearts open and our, and our minds open at the same time. So we inquire and t and uh, and try to touch uh, and keep our finger on the heartbeat of of people who are uh, in increasing numbers dedicated to change and see what we can provide for them for tools. You've already provided us with tools for some decades, actually. It feels <laughs> like, and and I am I am heartened that you are still here and doing that continually with that same fervor and passion that I'm sure there are countless people would voice that same echo to you. It's a lot gratitude. less lonely than it used to be. A lot less lonely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I think that's, gonna, that's true for a lot of people who are embodying yeah. the change that your books are talking about. They yeah. are a lot less lonely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much, everyone, for, for this conversation, for the work you're continuing to do. I... Um, you know. Yes, 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 society, let's make it happen. You're watching Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson with the wonderful folks at New Society Publishers who are at that cutting edge giving us their 